Good morning, church. Uh, I am uh, back with a, another devotional video. Uh, and uh, just uh, been feeling like this topic needs to be brought up again in our church. And, and if any of you are uh, out there and maybe not uh, attending our church regularly or part of a, our global family of believers in, in Jesus Christ and um, are watching, uh, maybe this, this word is, is encouraging for you, but uh, I've been feeling like there's this word that uh, needs to be said now in this time in 2021 uh, that really draws our attention back to uh, staying faithful to God and to our Savior. Um, there is just so many forces uh, in this world uh, that would seek to pull you away from that faithful calling and that faithful obedience. And um, and I feel like it's it's important to, to draw attention to them and to warn against them, uh, to share the word of God against those things, but also to tell you what God does say um, about wickedness in this world, about dark times in this world, about struggles in this world. Because I think it's, it's really important for us to uh, maintain that perspective and hold those truths out in front of us. Uh, that way we don't lose sight and, and uh, be distracted by what we see happening, uh, you know, out in, and around us. So... Uh, let's pray and we'll jump into this morning's devotion. Again, continuing in, in the topics that I've covered uh, recently in the last devotional video, I covered uh, first, uh, excuse me, Proverbs uh, 1 7. And then uh, prior to that, I talked about a passage in Malachi 3. Um, we'll do a quick recap after we pray. God, I, I thank you that your word is true. I thank you that your word is true in season and out of season. I thank you that you equip us and you prepare us for the work that you are doing. Uh, that you call us into your ministry, you call us into uh, the work that you have begun, and we get to participate uh, in that work. I pray that we would be a faithful people. We would not lose sight of what it is that you have called us to. Uh, I pray that we would be a people who is patient and is willing to wait upon the Lord, uh, even though uh, we feel there may be urgency and we feel like there's a need to act now and we may feel like there is a need to do something. Uh, but I pray, God, that we would be a people who ultimately wait for you and wait for you to act and are, are willing to act when you tell us to act and in a way that you tell us to act, Lord. In your name, amen. Uh, so I, I read from Malachi 3 uh, th uh, this week um, as part of our Monday devotion um, and then uh, for, uh, read from Proverbs 1-7 after that. And then this morning, uh, if you want to have your Bible handy, I'm going to read from Matthew 10. Um, and I'm going to read verse 28. Uh, again, uh, Matthew 10, 28, and it's uh, Jesus speaking. In Malachi 3, there is a, a prophetic word that comes out from Malachi to the people uh, contemporary to him. So he's giving that warning to people around him. Uh, but it is also a prophetic word for the church today. Uh, at the time, Malachi was making a warning uh, to God's chosen people of, of Israel, the nation of Israel. Uh, but that prophetic uh, warning is true for us today. God's chosen people uh, through the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ and, and those of us who identify as Christians and as Christ followers. And, and his warning was uh, kind of had a multiple elements to it, but I think that, that I, I covered them in, in Monday. You can watch that in full. But simply put, they are, uh, first, uh, wickedness will increase. There is a time before the return of Christ where wickedness will increase and it will seem to prosper and righteousness will be without blessing. And so that is sort of a, a, a prophetic uh, promise that Malachi gives us. Uh, the second part of that that he warns us is that a lot of you chosen people of God, uh, at the time Israelites, but uh, certainly I think this is a, a good warning uh, for the people of, of churches around the world today. He warns and he says, some of you are going to look at the prospering of wickedness and you are going to make the wrong decision as a result of that you'll see wickedness increase. And so you're going to see that happen. And then you're going to say, you know what? God, following God, obeying God, fearing God is not something that is prosperous for me. So I too am going to walk away and pursue uh, wickedness and strategies of this world and things like that. And so uh, that was sort of the second promise. And then again, the third piece of that is that Jesus will return. And on that day, wickedness will receive its just uh, uh, recompense and, and re just repayment. And, and the people who were faithful and, and remained fearful of God and his authority and his lordship uh, will be a people who are blessed and, and restored uh, at that point in time. So those are my three sort of reminders from that. Uh, that led into the thought uh, this uh, week uh, from Proverbs 1-7, which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. 
Uh, there are so many question marks in the world around us today. And, and my encouragement to you then and today is that begin uh, by studying God's word. Uh, begin by having a healthy fear, of, a healthy awe of the power and authority of God uh, as you look at what's happening around you. And when you do, my promise to you is that you'll begin to have clarity and you'll begin to see through uh, the different smoke and mirrors that we see happening through all of the things that are going on in this world. You begin to understand more fully what God is doing and what is happening. So that was that. And then again, uh, Matthew 10, 28, I hope you're there with me, is the verse for this morning. Matthew 10, 28, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Um, and, and so there's a two part uh, to this scripture. Again, this is Jesus who is speaking. He says, don't fear those who can kill the body but do nothing to the soul. Rather fear him, God, who can kill both body and soul. And uh, so the, the, the first thing that I would raise is that in a lot of Christian communication uh, on in websites and social media and apps and even just in conversation, I see a lot of people expressing a lot of fear uh, around uh, the uh, growing wickedness that we see in uh, our culture, the growing wickedness and endorsement of wickedness that we see in our government the growing wickedness that we see in the uh, election of certain party officials that we may not like, we may not like their part, their, their policies, and some of them may be genuinely wicked. Uh, and we, we see that wickedness increasing around us. And what's interesting is that I see a lot of Christians and a lot of these communications behaving in a fearful way. I see a lot of uh, people uh, arguing that we preemptively lash out and we strike against these things in a manner that is inconsistent with the teaching of Christ and the teaching of Scripture. I see a lot of people uh, disobeying clear teaching in Scripture um, because they feel like they uh, see wickedness and therefore they are entitled uh, because there is wickedness that is present to strike out and to act in a certain way, despite the fact that the Bible tells them to not. Uh, and so uh, that is fear, uh, and I'm going to call it for what it is. Uh, there are people right now who are trying to uh, make arguments uh, that say, hey, you fight wickedness in this way, you combat wickedness in this way. Um, and, and ultimately, I see a lot of Christians, uh, some whom uh, ironically had said they weren't afraid of the virus, they're not afraid of all of these things, but suddenly they seem very afraid of uh, of liberal culture. They seem very afraid of, of uh, socialism and communism. They, they, they have these huge fears attached to these things, the way they act. And so my challenge there is to, to, to not be afraid. Uh, even if this government or even if any government has the authority to put us to death for our faith and for our righteous uh, decisions and the righteous words and things that we do, uh, so be it. Uh, my fear is not of them. My fear is of God. And so my call is to be obedient to to him because he is the one ultimately that I fear and I have a, a great awe and, and a respect for. And so uh, that is, is promise one and that is my challenge one. If you're one of those people who is fearful of the things that are going on in this world, uh, you feel like the wickedness needs to be fought and we need to strike, strike against it uh, with a word or deed, but we're not first seeking the truth and the wisdom and the commands of scripture, you're wrong. Um, and uh, you need to be really careful that it's not coming out of the fear of the wrong thing. Uh, and then separately, uh, there is that reminder that uh, there is a need for us to be a people who fear God. Uh, the Bible tells us so many times not to fear uh, things of this world and things in this life, but to fear God. Um, and when we fear God, we wait for God to move. That is a characteristic, I think, of people who fear God is, is first, they're willing to wait to see what God does. Second, they are people who are willing to obey God, even if they don't understand or uh, aren't able to make sense of what God commands. And so that's the second characteristic, I would say, of people who fear God. And, and third, people who fear God also understand the, the time limit that is placed on this life and understand the high value of eternity. Uh, and behave in such a way and conduct themselves in such a way that they are a witness to that high value of eternity and the high value of the promise that we have as believers for what comes for us and what blessings we'll receive in eternity for being faithful. So that's my challenge to you today. Uh, don't fear uh, the things of this world. Don't fear uh, uh, the, the things that are around us and, and that seem to be ominous and threatening. Instead, fear God and uh, begin uh, to pursue his word, pursue his knowledge, pursue his, uh, his commands first, um, and then 
uh, begin to think about how we should act in, in conjunction with what God has instructed us to do. I love you all. I hope that is encouraging. These, these last couple devotional videos have been challenging for me to share. They're a little uh, harder hitting. Uh, and maybe in some ways they feel a little less encouraging and uplifting as I would like them to be. But I think it's really important that these truths be out there uh, for us as believers. I think uh, too many of us are uh, responding with fear to what's happening in the world around us. And instead of being a people who can obey the words of God, the words of Jesus Christ, uh, our Savior, we become people who act and behave like the, the sinful people of the world. And the Bible has warnings against that. Uh, so I uh, hope this has been challenging and encouraging to you all. I hope you were able to make midweek last week. Uh, looking forward to connecting with you at church this coming Sunday. Bye.